I seem to be getting older with each vid I make. Maybe it's just the circumstances. Maybe it's the spring air that brings about my beauty. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> of course, the political um, bit this last year, uh, in 2012, really knocked me on my keister. And, you know, mm, <laughs> well, let's see, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 2016, I'm so not looking forward to it. <laughs> Oh my heavens, it's like a major headache. Today, should we discuss the Pope? And basic ministers and basic places. Or should we discuss the fact of how humans need these places? A building. They go and they find their favorite place to be a minister in his own house. Low, very small congregation. And suddenly the hat gets passed around. Let's get a church. Let's build one. Okay, I agree they probably need a bigger thing than a 1,000 square foot house. So anyway, they go on. And they build on this pretty good sized church that can hold at least 500 people. Well, sooner or later, the congregation grows and we're up to 1,500 people. So we have to pass the hat around. To make sure you tie 10% plus that little hat so then we can build a bigger church. And they do build a bigger church. They can hold 2,500, not 1,500, because they're looking ahead. They have their windows and beautiful colored glass. They have their pews, mess, made out of the best oak. I think it's red oak. They have new Bibles and new songbooks. And they have a preacher with a sub-minister. And both wives are oh so prim and proper. White gloves, hats, and all their beautiful dressing. They are the show of the minister on his arm and must always check on the sick, the poor, the forgotten, and the people who need saved. I don't know if that means crossing traffic or, or what. But anyway, they need saved. <laughs> so off we go of being a minister's wife. You know, it's so underrated. You can't wear too much makeup, or you shouldn't wear any, depending if free Methodist, no makeup, no dancing, no breathing. Anyway, a very light makeup if you're in any other congregation and your husband happens to be ahead of that pulpit. So there you are. And you're thinking to yourself, am I doing the right thing? You have people over for dinner. You have new ministers come in town that have spoken for your husband in the past when he's been ill or out of town. And you make sure that you thank them with a very nice dinner. Some with water, some with wine, some get milk. <laughs> All in perfectly Waterford glasses. If a wife disagrees with her husband, she has embarrassed him in front of his congregation. And when they get home, he will speak to her in a firm voice, very firm. I don't want you to look like a whore or a prostitute. I don't want you opening your mouth. You want me to lose some of the people in my congregation? 
And the congregation is very interesting. It's split into three personalities. One personality does not believe the minister has sex or the ordained preacher, whatever. He doesn't have sex. He married Mary Magdalene and felt sorry for her. There is no sex. The second group are people that think they are a good, loyal couple that aren't human and are happily ever after and want them to come to all their benefits because she looks good and he's quite handsome. And then there's the third group, open-minded, and think that the minister's wife must be held captive to the impossibilities of being perfect, and she's not a whore. So, hmm. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard, and it's like every church is different. The Catholic Church, of course, have deacons who can marry. The priests cannot. Nuns never marry. And nuns don't wear the habits that much anymore, actually. they uh, I see a lot of nuns wearing uh, clothes and their cross, and that's how I know that they're nuns, and they're out actually doing outreach programs for the poor. And you can see them at the church if you wish. There's, some of them are really good counselors. They have degrees. Um, they're actually a really good point of that church. Do all priests molest? No. <laughs> I have a friend, Father. Uh, good God, I forgot his name. <laughs> He's a good friend, though. Oh, Lord, please forgive. Anyway, he's a good priest. And right now he's down in Seattle, the cathedral. And, oh, Father Pat, sorry. <laughs> Pat, if you're watching this, please forgive me. Oh, I, I make him have gray hairs anyway because I'm not, like, I can be really controversial. And he's like, oh, my. You know, I can see him cover his eyes. I didn't, see, I didn't hear that. I didn't see that. And I wasn't raised Catholic. Uh, my grandfather's Catholic and my grandmother Mormon. la -dee da <laughs> So, and now I'm uh, a minister with the Universalist, Universalist Life Church. I perform weddings. But I have yet to do a service or a sermon of any kind. And some people have said, you know, that there's some that do theirs online instead. And it's, uh, you know, no tithing ne necessary unless you want to make a love offering and no need for a church built of brick or mortar or whatever. Church is in your heart. That's where God is. So housing makes no difference. Oh, yes. I was a preacher's wife. I truly did love him. But I couldn't live up to the standards. And that was sad. So all you people out there to give a hard time to the preacher's wife. She's human. She's just as human as the man she married. And remember that. It's healthier for everybody. Okay? Okay. And have a wonderful day. Bye.